What's up guys? Um, another quick little video today. I uh, wanted to talk about Quick Connects. Uh, some of the options that are out there that are commonly used. You've got your Dean's Micro Connector and uh, I believe they call this the 2R if you're looking for this one specifically. Um, this is what Saberforge uses for their Quick Connect. So for people that ask um, what they actually use, this is it. Um, and then you also have two types of JST connectors. Um, this one being the more common kind, the kind that you're going to find on any of the pre-wired um, custom saber shop stuff, and then this less common but cheaper kind. Um, this is obviously the cheapest, second cheapest, most expensive. Um, and so these are just some of the options that are commonly found. I know there's a million others, um, but this is generally what you're going to see. And uh, I've got a good amount of experience with all three at this point. And so I wanted to just kind of weigh in on each one, which maybe helps some of you guys out. Um, these were the first ones I bought um, when I was just doing sink tube sabers. And for that, it worked great. There's a lot of space inside because they're a thin wall. Um, that's the biggest downside to these is they're bulky, but they're super solid. It's, you can see it's got an actual clip. Um, I mean, they're plenty tight without the clip, but that clip just holds it together really well. So something like this, if you have the space, um, it works great, and I want to say I paid around a dollar for 20 or something connectors, so they're super cheap. Um, the biggest downside being if you go with these and then you switch to something like this, they're not going to be compatible. Um, this is a really common industry standard um, connector for Sabres, which makes it a really good choice. Um, I think I paid around three dollars for this. I think it was around 20 or so connectors, 20 or 30, which is the same as this. It was just three dollars versus a dollar. Um, these are also very solid. The the biggest downside being they're just long. Um, they're skinnier, but they're still a long connector. Um, for something like a battery that's down in your hilt, um, it's a great option. And uh, I know a lot of people aren't necessarily uh, advocates for putting a bunch of quick connects but I think if you're gonna do anything as a quick connect do your battery um, if you're running a board that way you can always pull power a hundred percent away from your board if you need to work on it that's just my personal recommendation I know there's people that are gonna debate that to death um, I think it's a good idea and these are great for that um, they're okay for LEDs something that you need to keep in mind though uh, especially if you start running multiple connectors from the same LED uh, if you look at, you can use the, the blade here as a comparison um, because it goes down in the hilt. Uh, and, you know, it, the LED goes in the same spot as the hilt. Um, you can see that it's about the same, you know, width as a blade. So they get bound up, or they can get bound up really easily if you haven't um, done a masterful jigsaw puzzle of wiring in the hilt that you know allows it to all fall into place. So something just to keep in mind if you're using these for the actual LEDs, um, they can be a little bulky, but they're great. You can buy them with leads. Uh, you can also buy them with the uh, inside, something you can crimp on, although you need a, an actual crimping tool. Trying to do it, um, I've done most of mine with these pliers and it, it works okay, but it's just not as solid as a proper crimping tool. Um, but if you buy them with leads like this, one of the downsides is most people use a 28 gauge wire like this. And uh, this is a little bigger. I'm not sure exactly what gauge, but you can see there that while this is super flexible, uh, this just isn't. It gets bound up really easily. So I would recommend if you buy it with the leads like this, uh, cut it pretty close down. Get it to where when you saw, you know, you're stripping the wire pretty much from the plug out. Um, if you do that, it works great. Um, but if you're running a thin wire to the thick wire, it can get bound up. Uh, as far as the, the Dean's micro connectors, these are going to spend, I think, a buck and change per set. So obviously the most expensive uh, option, but you get you know heat shrink with it, um, which is kind of a nice little plus. And uh, you don't need to run uh, leads or anything from it because you can solder these directly to the wire. So you don't need a crimping tool, you don't need a, a plug with leads. Um, a little bit more advanced as far as if you're not really uh, experienced with soldering, these can be a little more tricky. Um, 
to solder to and actually get a really nice solid joint for something that you're going to be banging against another saber. Um, I don't really like these. Uh, I know I'm kind of the minority here. Uh, Size-wise, they're awesome. They're small. They're compact. They're convenient. But I just, unless you really, really plan your build ahead with these, you can run into some trouble. Um, and that's kind of why I don't like them is because stuff just happens. And uh, I, I don't know. I just, I find these to be almost more hassle than they're worth. Um, I guess is the biggest thing. Um, and, you know, the cost. I, I butchered a set earlier today on accident being stupid and not planning. And, you know, if you do that with these, you're out five cents. If you do that with this, you're out, you know, almost two bucks. So uh, the real answer is, you know, plan your builds and don't be stupid and it shouldn't matter. But uh, unfortunately, no matter how much experience you have, stuff does happen. And uh, so I don't know. I just think um, that these are an option. They're a great option and they're probably the best option. Personally, I'm not a huge fan. I'm actually starting to get more uh, into actually just soldering my LEDs in place and then just using a single JST connector down uh, at the battery. And other than that, I think that uh, eliminating connections uh, is, is something that I'm at least starting to prefer um, for my own personal wiring. Uh, obviously, everybody's gonna have a different preference, and I just wanted to show you kind of the three main options. Um, obviously, there's a million others. Um, I know some people use like the, uh, bullet connectors. Uh, I wouldn't do that. I think it just kind of looks crappy and they're bulky and they're just not really the best. Um, but then again, I mean, if it works for you and you're doing all your builds that way, then cool. Um, I would say definitely these two are what are going to be considered industry standards. Um, this I think is mostly specific to Saber Forge, their Quick Connect. Um, if you use JSTs and then you end up buying a custom Saber Shop part, it's always going to work. I know a lot of the um, custom Saber Smiths use these. So uh, this is a great option for the money and for being able to um, be compatible with other people's parts. I, I know for the most part, um, I know when I started out, I for some reason I did all my LEDs and batteries with um, what I'm gonna call the female side. Uh, I believe most people do their LEDs and their batteries with the male side and then they would run the female side kind of as the harness from uh, whatever board um, they're using. But uh, I, it's really easy to, uh, I guess for new, um, saber builders to want to just throw a JST connector on everything but just really really think when you're doing it is this something I'm going to need to remove enough that it needs a quick connector I mean I, I see them on speakers and it's kind of like why how often are you swapping your speaker out I mean if you're blowing the speaker that often uh, you probably have something else going on um, batteries uh, they probably never die, but for maintenance sake, it's great to be able to remove power to the board. Um, LEDs, absolutely, because you know you may want to swap, swap LEDs. Um, but I even see guys do them on their, their switches and stuff, and it's like, yeah, it, it's kind of convenient, but you you'll be surprised how fast you run out of space. Um, I mean, whoop. imagine if you ran one for, just for a little comparison, um, if you're running one for your switch, and one for your recharge port, that's two right there. Uh, and then if you're running one for your LED, which is gonna be kind of in the same area, there's your third one. I mean, this is all right here, just in one, one area of your saber, not counting switches coming down and resistors and stuff like that and you know wires. Once you get some wire bulk going on, I mean, it, it just ends up being a mess. Uh, so just something to really really consider when you're doing it when you're planning it um, Think do you really need a quick connector? Um, and Generally speaking you don't um, It's I know it's a nice thought to be able to quick detach everything I wish that I could have a quick detach on everything, but a lot of the times it's just not necessary um, So uh, hopefully that helps you guys out um, This was a way longer video than I intended it to be but uh, quick connects are, are kind of a big thing. Uh, it's, it's a question that I see asked a lot as far as 
what quick connector should I use or the biggest is where should you put it and uh, again I would say LED and battery is all I would recommend other people are gonna have different opinions um, that's mine so anyway uh, thanks for watching uh, thumbs up thumbs down subscribe if you like seeing videos like this and thanks for watching